know, when I hold so many phones in my hand, it means two things. One, of course, there's lots and lots of stuff on the show. And second, our budgets on this show are a little low. We don't have a table to actually keep them on. So those are the two things that now I needed you to know. But of course, it's the first one that we'll focus on. And that is, I've got so much stuff on the show. I've got the Oppo F11 Pro in Mumbai. Amazing launch. I'm going to show you some shots of what a launch should really look like. Maybe one of the best launches I've ever seen of a phone. Then the Samsung M30, yes, rumored at a time, is out and is looking very, very good. This is online for Samsung. And the third one is the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Again, a great phone from the Xiaomi brand. And of course, the competition between Samsung and Xiaomi getting better and better and better. Lots more from the Mobile World Congress. Let's get started with today's show. Oppo is back with the next in its F-Series. This is the Oppo F11 Pro that comes with a pop-up camera and a no-notch screen. Does it do enough to be an all-rounder though? We find out. Samsung rattles the online segment with the next in its M-Series. The Galaxy M30 is here with three cameras and a massive 5000 mAh battery. Is this the phone to set your gaze on in this price segment? We'll take a look. The Budget King is back with the Redmi Note 7 Pro and as the battleground in the under 15K really heats up, we find out if Xiaomi has done enough to make this phone stand tall among the competition. We continue our coverage from the Mobile World Congress 2019 and bring you the best of 5G from MediaTek and even Motorola. So let's get started of course on the show with all the news coming in, all the headline makers from the world of mobiles. A smartwatch which won't die on your wrist for up to two weeks. That is the proposition of the new Huawei Watch GT, launched in India, which will go on sale March 19 onwards. The Watch GT comes at a starting price of Rs 15,990. The notable features include a 1.39-inch OLED display, a dual-chip architecture which enables 80% of power consumption, coupled with 16 MB of RAM and 128 MB of ROM. With claims of a 14-day battery life and some great fitness tracking elements, this one is likely to appeal to many fitness enthusiasts. Let's start our journey on Selguru with this, the Oppo F11 Pro. And like I said, and I will be showing you the shots as I'm speaking, the launch was absolutely fantastic. Different rooms to show, different kind of things, including the fact that the low light photography in this phone is excellent. So they built areas around really high tech looking areas where you could go and try it out. Lots of other very interesting things and you'll see it as the review comes in. But first, I want to start off with my first impressions of the phone and it's very interesting. So the thing that really distinguishes this phone from any other is the fact that it's the first no-notch phone at a price like this. So the screen is a complete screen, a very, very nice screen, huge screen, and it has absolutely no notch because of a pop-out camera. So Oppo's first pop-out camera. The good thing is they put the pop-out camera in the middle. So another problem that happens is that when you put it on either side, when you're actually taking a selfie, you can get a bit of a warped overall orientation. The third big one, 48 megapixel back camera and sensor that again, absolutely and totally puts it in a league of its own at this price point. Then of course, as you can see, very nice looking phone, absolutely fantastic in terms of the way they've actually put the design elements together. And then the fast charge with a big battery. Let's take a look at the rest. Oppo's F-Series is best known for its focus on selfies and front camera optics. Well, Oppo is back with even more innovation in its latest from this series, the F11 Pro. Launched at a grand event in Mumbai, Oppo seems to have set the stage to go beyond the front camera this time. But the rising star could very well be the pop-out camera that this phone spots. At 24,990 rupees, let's see if the Oppo F11 Pro makes it as the perfect all-rounder. On first looking, the Oppo F11 Pro is a phone that doesn't try very hard and yet scores high on the looks and the design front. It is a perfect fit in the hand, but it's the colour that really makes this phone stand out. We got the Aurora Green for review, which seems to have a green and blue dual tone and looks very premium. The Oppo F11 Pro is dressed to impress, and we mean this even with its display. This is the first full view display phone with no notch in this under 25k price range, and it doesn't disappoint. It's a 6.3 inch Full HD Plus display with good viewing angles. It is an LCD display, but we have no complaints here. Coming to what could very well be the star of Oppo's show, the optics. The rear camera has a massive 48 megapixel and 5 megapixel sensor. The images we took were very clear and once zoomed in, the picture detailing was impressive, with no loss in pixels at all. 
The Oppo F11 Pro comes with an ultra night mode which click bright shots at night with very less grains. The front of the camera houses a pop-up 16 megapixel camera which emerges really fast as soon as the front camera option is tapped on. It's smooth and it's on the center giving a good selfie orientation although selfies clicked seem slightly touched by the camera's AI or software. The Oppo F11 Pro runs on the latest Android 9 topped with Color OS 6. Apart from some unnecessary apps, it's a nice UI with big icons. The phone packs in the MediaTek Helio P70 processor which is powerful and handles browsing and gaming quite well. This variant has 6GB RAM which is more than adequate for this phone. The phone does good on the battery front as well with a 4000 mAh battery. The cherry on the cake here is Oppo's Whoop flash charge and the battery can last you more than a day of heavy use. Our commitment to the Indian uh, market, so from the very beginning we heavily invest in different marketing uh, solutions. We also put a lot of investment in R&D. We set up our own uh, electronic manufacturing cluster. We set up our research center in Hyderabad. I think all those long-term commitment to the Indian market is something uh, the, the other brands cannot compare. First time we are coming up with the 48 megapixel real camera with the AI, uh, uh, AI software that help you to give the exact perfect selfie picture and plus in this time we are coming up with 3.0 charging and this will give you 20 minutes less than the full battery charge compared to WOOC 1.0. So if you want to take a selfie, good selfie, and the other one is the night mode, and third one is the battery charging. These three together with the hardware design. So with this software and hardware design all clubbed together, this makes this product different from the other existing devices. Our verdict. Oppo does not skimp out on any feature on the Oppo F11 Pro. The full view display is excellent and the rising star is definitely the pop-up camera. But with competition in lower price segments coming with almost the same specifications, Oppo is trying hard to keep its face above water. It succeeds this time with the F11 Pro and if 25k is your budget, then this is the best option right now. Alright, let's move on. This is our second big review, the Samsung M30 and out of the box, literally, I'm going to tell you what they say and what we're going to add on with this. So the Infinity U display, which of course is that exact display that they have on their other M series also, but remember this is on a super AMOLED screen. So that little notch that it does have, dew drop or water drop or whatever anybody wants to call it. I think in terms of notches, this is the best notch to have other than a punch hole camera. So this then is, I think, the the first big thing at this price point, a super AMOLED screen in itself is absolutely amazing. The second is the triple camera at the back again. In the A series, Samsung has had a triple camera, but look at that price point versus this one. And the third is, as it says on the box, 5,000 mAh battery, which I think is such a big deal on a phone like this. And remember, it's not a thick phone, it's not a heavy phone, it's actually very, very well put together. And of course, the phone seems to be wanting to talk to me a lot asking for more features to be spoken about, which is exactly what we'll do in our review. When a tech giant like Samsung enters the millennial market dominated by Chinese players, we sit up and listen. The Samsung M30 is feature rich and is ready to woo the social media focused millennials. Does it succeed? Let's find out. Looks are very important for this target audience and the M30 looks the part. It comes with a teardrop notch at the top and Samsung calls this the Infinity U display. There is a plastic unibody which still looks elegant and the curved design makes it comfortable for one hand use. The gradient finish is already popular across segments and the phone also comes with a fingerprint scanner at the back which is a tad bit inconvenient. The M30 comes with a massive 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display with narrow bezels at the top. We like the viewing angles and visibility is decent in daylight. The notch is not too distracting and the colours leave no room for complaints. And a round of applause for Samsung for giving us a Super AMOLED display at this price point. The Galaxy M30 runs Samsung Experience 9.5 on top of Android 8.1 Oreo. We would have liked the latest Android update at this price point to beat the competition from the likes of the Redmi Note 7 Pro. The Samsung M30 comes with an octa-core Samsung Exynos 7904 processor, same as the Galaxy M20, and the phone races through daily tasks without any lag. Multitasking and gaming was decent, though battery does take a bigger hit than expected during gaming. The phone comes in 4GB and 6GB RAM variants. And battery is where this phone comes out as a winner. With a mammoth 5000 mAh battery, this phone is designed to meet the millennial's multitasking content consumption and social media needs. This battery powers the phone for almost a day and a half of good use. And 
what about all those Instagram shots? The M30 comes with a triple camera setup with a 13 megapixel primary lens, a 5 megapixel depth sensor, and a 5 megapixel ultra wide lens. We enjoyed playing with different modes like panorama and live focus. Images are crisp and ready to grab all those social media likes. There is a 16 megapixel front shooter, and selfies look perfect enough to be unrealistic. Edge detection is pretty neat as well. The M30 is priced at Rs 14,990 for 4GB and Rs 17,990 for 6GB RAM. The Selguru Verdict When Samsung ventures into a space occupied by Chinese phone makers, it makes many quake in the boots. We would have liked the more recent Android update which would have given the M30 an edge over the likes of Xiaomi and Asus. But having said that, a great battery, a fantastic display, good design and a decent camera make the Samsung M30 a winner in its own right. And now for top story number three. Yes, and we're just getting warmed up. I have many more. So this is the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Like I said, it's becoming an all-out battle online between Samsung M-Series and this. And look at the price points. Look at what you're getting now for the price. Look at the M30 from Samsung. Look at this phone, the Redmi Note 7 Pro. What does it say on the box? So first of all, it says 48 megapixel plus 5 megapixel. AI dual rear camera. Now, 48 megapixel, isn't that amazing? But actually, it's not because it's not really, truly a 48 megapixel. They're using some software algorithms and technology to give you 48 megapixel, and you can use that as an option. So it's not a true 48 megapixel, but still, at least it says so on the box. Qualcomm Snapdragon 675, 6.3-inch uh, uh, full HD display and a 4,000 mAh battery. And then, of course, if you take a look at it, the one or two things that immediately stick out, literally, is the fact that the dual camera at the back actually sticks out. Second is that design. Now, this glass back, Aurora, I think, is the design language that they have it and they've used it before on some of their phones, is absolutely stunning. So this is a very premium-looking phone, and for the price, it is incredible. So. Of course, this and the Samsung M30 must have a shootout. And remember, only one can win. But I cannot fit in in today's show. So right now, all we can afford in the time that we have is a very, very quick review. The king of hearts in the budget segment is back with its next offering. This is the Redmi Note 7 Pro that seems to promise the world in its sleek body and with a light tag of 13,999 rupees. But with the battle really heating up in the under 15k segment, can Xiaomi have its cake and eat it too this time? And how does Xiaomi really view its competition in the segment? I mean, competition is not new, and you know, a healthy competition is always good. Uh, we appreciate a lot of other brands trying to push the envelope from their side. In Xiaomi, again, our focus stays on Mi fans. Uh, we are not looking at competition to decide what phones we should have, but we always want to raise the bar. Xiaomi has worked long and hard on the design and really perfected it. The Redmi Note 7 Pro is gorgeous. We got the 4GB RAM, Space Black variant for review and loved the in-hand feel and the glossy back. Yes, it does attract some smudges, but it is a premium-looking phone. After all, it does not have a plastic finish like some of its competition in the segment, but in fact has Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and on the back. This does give it quite an edge over its competitors. The only thing we wish Xiaomi had kept in mind is the protruding dual rear camera that seems to stick out quite a bit and which may leave the lens susceptible to scratches. Going beyond the looks, the screen is a large 6.3-inch Full HD Plus dot-notch display. The dot notch is not really distracting while viewing videos and there is even an option to hide the notch in the settings. It is not a traditional LCD display. It has an LTPS panel which gives it a good colour reproduction and the display is pretty okay. Under the hood, the Redmi Note 7 Pro is powered by the Snapdragon 675 processor which till now has only been seen in some smartphones above 25K. It is good and multitasking is a breeze on this phone. The Redmi Note 7 Pro rides high on more than one strength. There is 4,000 mAh battery on board which will last one and a half days of use without charge. There is a 64 GB and a 128 GB storage variant and there is a hybrid dual SIM slot along with a micro SD card slot for additional storage. Coming to the brass tags, Xiaomi has aggressively priced this beauty at 13,999 rupees for the 4 GB RAM variant. The phone runs on the Android 9 Pie with Mi UI 10. There's a dual rear camera with a 12 and 5 megapixel sensor. Yes, this phone does have a 48 megapixel lens which actually has to be turned on in the settings. The default is set to 12 megapixel. 
There's a Sony IMX586 sensor which is really impressive for a phone in this price bracket. The images we took were sharp and the 48 megapixel lens when turned on did capture some details but the colors were slightly saturated. The night mode did an average job with night shots with some of the images turning on slightly grainy. There's 4K video recording in this phone which worked very well and it can be considered to be one of the best video cameras in this price range on a phone. The dot notch houses a 13 megapixel front camera with AI portrait mode which does blur the background and does a good job with selfies. There is face unlock option and a fingerprint scanner which worked as promised. The cell guru addict. The shiny glossy Redmi Note 7 Pro is as dazzling on the outside as it is on the inside. Xiaomi manages to grab the lion's share in the price segment with an excellent Qualcomm Snapdragon processor and with advanced optics. There's nothing that might be a deal breaker and so it makes for a compelling choice at 13,999 rupees. On the Selguru Show, we'll take a quick break when we come back. Lots more, including the Mobile World Congress. And now it's time for our next top story. We are back at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain, and we are back with Sanjana dancing. You know, once you've unleashed the Kraken, it's impossible to put her back in the box. But lots of interesting stories. Motorola with their new mods and a lot more with their G-series. And MediaTek, where, you know, we, we're great fans of MediaTek out here with the kind of stuff that they do. So their Helio P90 and their 5G also makes a big comeback. But of course, we've got to start with Sanjana dancing with the robots. Well, I am robot dancing right here. I'm at the MediaTek booth at Mobile World Congress where they have launched the new processor. This is the P90. It has amazing, unique AI capabilities. But this is not the only thing they have here. They've also launched the M70, which is the first 5G capable chipset for a modem. They've displayed it right there. We'll show you the crazy speeds of 5G that they've displayed here. While I get on with my robot dance I have going on here. Dancing robots and detecting various poses, MediaTek had some fun showcasing the AI prowess of its new P90 chipset. The Helio P90 uses an advanced AI solution, APU 2.0, that can handle complex AI apps and recognize poses and actions of more than one person. This means detecting multiple moving objects in a frame or simply having fun with AR avatars. Something that was showcased here as well. Hmm, my boxer AR avatar is responding well but hopefully does not resemble me. Well, MediaTek claims the P90 has four times the processing power than that of its previous P70 chipset. But when will we get to see this chipset in smartphones? The, the most important feature for uh, P90 would be the uh, AI application, especially for cameras. Yeah, we use the uh, AI to enhance uh, people's uh, experience on, on camera. No matter uh, we want to uh, get a very good shot when it is very dark, or uh, you, you could use a Helio P90 to, to have a very good shot even though the archer is moving. The device with Helio P90 will be available in India also very soon. MediaTek was not left off the 5G bandwagon. In fact, it showcased the first and what could be the industry's fastest sub-6 GHz live 5G modem. This is the Helio M70 5G modem. MediaTek showcased live speeds of up to a whopping 4.2 Gbps. This was showcased for the intelligent home-running 5G data transfer speeds as well as MM wave over the air tests of MediaTek's 5G antenna arrays. This is MediaTek's first 5G solution and it will come with LTE and 5G dual connectivity. So there's no deviating from mobile phones really at Mobile World Congress, but at Motorola's booth, they are displaying their new mod. Now this is the 5G mod that they've got here. This is one of the first few in the world that they're displaying here. It no, hasn't been launched yet. Even when it launches, it will probably first launch in the US market and then to the rest of the world. But what it can do is it just snaps onto a Motorola phone and turns that into a 5G phone. The best part is why would you not buy a 5G phone? Why would you go for this? Well, the answer is really simple. The fact that you snap this on even to a previous gen Motorola and it can convert that into a 5G phone. But not just this, Motorola has of course launched the new G7, the new series. Let's take a look at that as well. 
5G is the big theme at the Mobile World Congress, but here's one company that has got it on phones in a unique way. Meet the Moto 5G Mod that was showcased at MWC this year. This allows for a snap-on 5G experience with blazing fast speeds, reduced lag time and a fast mobile hotspot as well. The first 5G upgradable smartphone is the Moto Z3 that was here as well. The mod itself is around 200 grams and once snapped on onto the phone, the network is there. It does make the phone a bit more chunky, but that's a bearable trade-off for blazing internet speeds. There was another unique mod on display, the Amazon Alexa mod, which is basically a snap-on smart speaker. And it does not stop at that. There was a Polaroid printer mod as well, which snaps on very easily and can give you good prints straight from the camera roll. We even got a glimpse of the gaming mod or the Moto Gamepad. That comes with controllers on the side and got our hands on some Fortnite at the Mobile World Congress. The JBL Sound Boost mod is a snap-on speaker which comes with a kickstand as well and does not need to be paired separately. There was a Moto 360 camera mod for 360 degree pictures and videos. Every functionality that one could think of was a mod at the Mobile World Congress. This included a projector which can give a projection of up to 70 inches. Motorola also showcased their new lineup of the Moto G7 series. This is the Moto G7 Plus, which comes with a large 6.2 inch screen with a water drop screen and with Dolby stereo speaker and a dual rear camera with a 16 and 5 megapixel setup. The camera also packs in HDR mode for good shots. It is placed inside the Moto Ring and follows a similar design language as before. The G7 Plus comes with the Snapdragon 636 chipset. There was also the G7 on display, which comes with the Snapdragon 632 processor. Rest of the specifications are similar to the G7 Plus. Other variants like the G7 Power were also on display. And as the name suggests, packs in a mammoth 5000 mAh battery and claims 60 hours of battery life. The Moto G7 plays the cheapest of the lot and claims to be 60% faster than its predecessor. That then was the Cell Guru Show for this week. And of course, I've got a lot more happening next week, including, of course, the Realme 3. And like I said, lots more to follow. See you next week.